Hello and welcome to the Moncast. A podcast where twice a week we watch Pokemon and Digimon in tandem and discuss the similarities and differences that they share. My name's Sam. And I'm Stevie. The score currently stands at 3-1 to Pokemon and this time we're watching episode 5, Showdown in Pewter City and Kabutarimon's Electroshocker. We have news and stuff. That's what we have. Do you want to do feedback first? Yeah, because that's the bit I know how to do. Okay, you could do feedback and I'll I'll do the other stuff. First of all, we had Lunamon97 on Twitter said, Finally catching up to the Moncast. Laugh out loud. Thanks for the shout out. You two keep up the good work. So they're still listening. Also, May from Lost in Translation Mon tweeted us with two different accounts on two separate occasions. <laughs> first of all, from the podcast accounts, he said... There were some fighting words on the Moncast during the latest episode, and there was a picture of May with a Tanamon plush or Tanamon figurine or something. And if you listen to the last episode, you'll get why that creeped me out slightly, <laughs> because it brought back bad images. It's because, didn't I say that no one likes Tanamon? <laughs> he said May probably enjoys Tanamon, and I made it naughty. I'm scared of May because May is swole. May will defeat us. <laughs> From all the way in Australia. She'll just punch into the ground, it'll carry through. And we'll just be stood somewhere and then, like, mail just burst out of the ground. <laughs> She'll just sink the whole United Kingdom. Just with one punch. One punch! One punch, May. Oh, I'm so making fun out of that. Okay, and also, they said, thanks for the Moncast. Yesterday I watched Pokemon on the 3DS's anime channel, and the commercial for the 3DS port of Yellow made me buy it. So we got made to spend money on a video game. Woo! Yay! I think Yellow's my favourite of the three, because it's, it's got like a slight twist on the story, which is nice. It's probably the best of the three. Anyway, that's all of the stuff. So, bit of admon. We've had 200 listeners. I, I think that's really cool. I didn't. I honestly thought maybe five people would listen to this for a long time, and then we'd get to like 30 episodes in, and then 10 people will listen to us. But no... It's apparently done quite well, and I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, we seem to have like 30 listens pretty regularly currently. Hopefully that carries on. I hope we get more than 30, though. 30 is good, but we need more. Feed us with your lessons. Also, a bit of um, bit more admin. As Stevie mentioned last week, we're now going to start releasing episodes twice a week. So we're going to be releasing on a Tuesday and a Saturday for a little while anyway to see if we can handle the workload it's also going to help us boost through the first couple episodes because i'm not a massive fan of the first couple episodes of this season of digimon and pokemon because they're a bit meh it's not going to take us a year to get through adventure alone also we're not going to do a feedback segment in every episode so on the tuesday episodes we're going to be doing feedback on the saturday we've got a special little thing that we're going to start doing well we what i'm going to start doing i think people will like it i'm sure it'll be great and the Next bit we need to talk about is the format of the show. So we're going to watch each episode one for one until we finish Digimon. And then we're going to try and watch the movies as close to chronological order as possible. We're going to watch um, the first Pokemon movie and our war game together. But then when we've done that, we're going to do a special Pokemon episode where we're going to basically wrap up the rest of the season i'm going to try and watch them i'm going to try even if it's at twice speed in my own time i can, I can get through them or at least read the summaries and we can sort of give a, an overview of the adventures ash has that's basically my plan to go on wikipedia and read every episode synopsis so that means when we start season two of digimon season three etc we'll get a fresh start on both sides but if anybody does have an idea on a better way to handle this by all means let us know you can find us on facebook twitter tumblr with the will forums now and soundcloud and itunes just search for the moncast or you can email us at the at gmail.com cool so if anybody has a better setup or, or an idea of how we can tackle too much pokemon well, then by all means let us know and we'll, we'll take it on board and see if that'll help us i basically suggested that when we run out of a digimon series we start from the next pokemon series that's set in a new region so kanto would be with adventure then we'd go to johto for zero two then it's hoenn for tamers Sinnoh for frontier unova or unova i don't know how it's pronounced with data squad and then it would be kalos with fusion and then the seventh season of digimon that's the next bit of news 
So Digimon Universe Apple Monsters has been announced. It's a new set of things potentially being released this fall. It's a three-way collaboration between Bandai, Bandai Namco Entertainment and Toei Animation. So it's going to have TV show, games and toys. I'm personally hoping for a new V-Pet because I love V-Pets. They are my passion. You will find out at some point in this. I will do a special episode about V-Pets. So yeah, there's new Digimon. There's a new thing that looks like they're apps or something. I think it looks wonderful. I'm excited. I've not really looked at any of the new information that we've got yet. I don't want to get too hyped. Can you hear that? That's the sound of the hype train pulling in. Come aboard, Stevie. Come aboard. I'm not jumping on the digi hype train. You can tell when we do new segments that we haven't done before because they're a bit messy. <laughs> but we make up the name News and Stuff. News and Stuff or Admon. Hey, you had Mono A Mono, so I can have Admon. Fine. But Mono A Mono actually makes sense. So does Admon. The title of the podcast is Moncast. If it was like Admonistration. Oh, that's actually quite good. Uh, look at you knocking the title out of the park. See, if you make it longer, it's easier to tell what word it is. <laughs> okay, Admonistration. Admonistration. There we go. So last thing for Admonistration, the new segment's called Admonistration. Okay. The first episode we are watching this time is Showdown in Pewter City. Ash and Misty travel to Pewter City, where Ash learns about gym leaders. So he goes to fight Brock. He gets his Ash kicked, and he has to go and train up Pikachu to be stronger. And then he loses again, but somehow he wins because he showed determination or something. What did you like about this episode? Okay, I love how Team Rocket are now full on Three Stooges mode. I know. I think they're actually more like Wily e. Coyote. The first thing you see is them just digging a hole because Team Rocket likes to dig holes. And it's when they're just stood on the hole like, hmm, and it starts to fall around. And it's like, yeah, Team Rocket, hello. Here you are. Nice to see you. They're literally only there for the comedic effect in this episode. Yeah, it's so good. I also like that, like, Flint rock guy sells rocks. <laughs> That's his job. He goes and sells rocks, which are on the ground everywhere. So yes, Flint, who is Brock's dad, who he hasn't seen in years because Brock's raising his brothers and sisters by himself, whilst his dad is selling rocks. Just at the entrance to the town, but he can't find him. Yeah, so they're in the same town. <laughs> Which isn't a giant town, and he's selling rocks. How do you make a living out of that? He's just selling rocks. Why? I quite liked the twist, though, at the end with Flint being Brock's dad. Because it was so out of the blue. Actually, it wasn't. It just raises so many questions for me. Like, does he sit and watch his family struggling? Maybe he came back after his wife, I'm guessing they were married, had died. And just, instead of talking to his family, just watched. So, what did you like in this episode? I liked Pikachu a lot, because Pikachu is really cute and really funny in this episode. There's a line that Brock says, which is, uh, Pikachu is in its cutest stage. I was like, ah, oh, Brock. He could have said it's at its weakest stage or its first stage or its earliest stage. No, it's cutest stage. It's cutest. And he's not lying. Yeah, Pikachu is pretty cute. I didn't like how Pikachu's in so much pain in this episode. I know, it's like he's going to pop and then, like, just going to let Pikachu explode then, Brock. Because Ash can't return Pikachu. But Brock's still letting the thing, uh, let Onyx squeeze Pikachu. It's like, just gonna let that happen. I know. You hear like the little cries of pain. It's so mean. I don't like how Ash basically just experiments on him, just out of stubbornness. Experiments? I'm pretty certain that plugging Pikachu in to try and boost his power isn't something that's been tested very much. I was gonna talk about it later. But have you noticed that there's a theme of Pikachu getting powered up? And then exploding. Episode one, there was the lightning bolt. Episode two, there was the little bike dynamo. And in this episode, there's the uh, the wheel. So he just keeps getting powered up. Maybe that's why he's so strong. It just feels like he was torturing him. I think he was charging him up to maximum capacity. It just felt like evil experiments that you see in horror films. It didn't look nice. Like Pikachu didn't look like he was enjoying himself. No, his ears were pointing down. He was in pain. It wasn't nice. Did you notice how Brock sits in the dark and waits for trainers? So I'd just go off on a tangent, just remembering now. That is odd. When Ash walks into the gym, it's all pitch dark in there, and then a light descends on Brock, and he's just sat there cross-legged. Also, is Flint the new gym leader now? Or is there just no gym leader in Pewter City? Brock's family has issues. Brock's family is my favourite thing. <laughs> just all the mini Brocks. Who are voiced by Tiny Misty. Ash's mom and Brock, the three kids who talk. Really? Yeah. They've just got the same voice act. Oh, they're just so 
funny. Mm. It's just literally Brock for like half the height with the same eyes, <laughs> changing clothes based on gender. It's just like, who needs actual character design? We'll just copy his and downscale it. Just copy and paste his face. Oh, uh, mini Brocks. Is there anything else you liked about this episode? They just don't really bother explaining Nurse Joy being in every single Pokemon Center. She's like, oh, that's my sister. It's just like, okay, so is Joy your surname? Are you all just identical twins or quintuplets or octuplets or however many? I think they address that in a later episode. Can't remember. <laughs> I've no doubt that it's going to be really silly. Onyx is in this episode, one of my favourite Pokemon, and then it evolves into Steelix, which is on my team of, like, my favourite team, Steelix is amazing uh, steelix is all right it's cool it's got a mega revolution now okay have you got anything else that you liked i like how ash basically loses the first two gym battles he doesn't actually beat Brock. the first one he just gets destroyed completely and the second one he pretty much only almost wins because of environmental stuff so like the the safety system there the sprinklers if that didn't happen he'd still lose he basically cheated Yes, yes he did. So that's cool. So he's not just go al- going along and winning everything all the time, which is nice. He's such a fluke. That's what it is. He's such a bad trainer. He's not terrible. He's okay. He's got three Pokemon. He could have accepted help from Misty. No, right, I'm annoyed by that. Because, spoiler alert, Misty's a gym leader. She should know the rules. And she decides, oh no, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get Ash to cheat. I never thought of it that way. She wants Ash to use some of her Pokemon to make the battle easier, which is against Ash's MO. He wants to develop as a, as a trainer himself and become the best through his own means. It doesn't seem like something Misty would say. You know, why would she cheat? She knows the rules. It's something that isn't something Misty would do. And it's also something that Ash wouldn't consider because... The point of a gym challenge is to take the Pokemon you've raised and battle someone who's a specialist in a certain type and the obstacles that you get from fighting that sort of one specific type that someone's an expert of. And just to say, oh, my Pokemon are strong against rock types, just have some of those completely wipes out all of the progress Ash has made and basically makes it that Misty may as well be fighting him. Is there anything you don't like about this episode? They used a lot of the same clips and repeated them again, like Onyx crushing Pikachu. They use that one quite a lot. We're going to see a lot of this because of the, the time and the, the budget that they had. Oh, and Ash was cocky again at the start of the episode until he got torn down again. That seems to happen every episode. He just seems to always start off with this massive confidence boost. Well, I'm glad he has confidence. It's gonna it's, it's a big challenge he's set up for. He's literally gone out at 10 years old to catch every single known Pokemon in the world and fight these people who are specialists of this one specific type. So he's got to have some sort of confidence to himself, otherwise he's going to become a bad trainer. When you think about what he did in the last episode, where basically his Metapod got kidnapped, and then he threw the Metapod around and it evolved somehow. That's not really something he should be proud of. I don't think Ash gets much character development, like... Even in the newest episode, I doubt he's that much different from the way he is now. I still, I think he keeps that, you say cockiness, I think confidence. I think he's got a sort of, he'll fight anybody sort of attitude, which is kind of nice. It's it's something he'll need for his, his career choice. There's nothing wrong with being confident if you've actually got reason to be confident, but he's not done anything particularly good yet. <laughs> I have complaints. Pidgeotto's flying, but it's right at punching level. <laughs> Maybe tell Pidgeotto to fly slightly higher. Also, ground type's not effective on flying type. But it's also rock and ground, so it only use rock moves against it. I don't think they actually used any moves. Like, Geodude was just punching. <laughs> also, if you're going to go from typings of the game, Pikachu would be able to do nothing against Geodude and Onix because they're both ground types, which are resistant to electric. Yep, which makes the whole gym battle really stupid. Which makes Ash really stupid you're not a fan of ash are you no i am not he's trying so hard and failing so much he has he has failed this episode but he still gets the badge because he showed compassion you don't use an electric pokemon against a ground type he showed compassion he tortured his pokemon to make it stronger this isn't digimon he doesn't have the crest of love he's got the crest of being bad at pokemon the crest of being bad at pokemon was there anything else that you disliked i thought it was a bit creepy how brock mentions to ash that he has dreams of being a breeder and he wants ash to go and follow his dreams of being a breeder for him so brock wants ash to go and breed pokemon for him and live vicariously through ash that's a bit weird <laughs> it does seem odd breed for me go and breed them all gotta breed them all apart from that there, there wasn't much that i disliked about this episode it was more things that i didn't like like um 
odd animation stuff, but this stuff I've mentioned in every episode, so I'm going to stop mentioning animation unless it's particularly bad. Pikachu in pain hurts me. <laughs> I think Pikachu suffered in every episode. First episode, Spearow just peck the crap out of it. Second episode, it's got surgery. Third episode, it gets blinded. Fourth episode, uh... He gets a break there. Okay, it gets a break. Fifth episode, <laughs> experimented on. <laughs> and crushed. Oh yeah, almost squoze to death. Okay. Well, my favourite thing was the mini Brox. But what was your favourite thing? Onyx. It's a big rock snake. It's literally Ash's biggest challenge so far. I think it's one of the biggest Pokemon in the first 150. It's Ash's first gym challenge. And, you know, it's it's quite intimidating. None of Ash's Pokemon are even half the size of it. It's, it's like a boss, basically. It's a lot more intimidating than fighting, say, Geodude. Because Geodude's not that intimidating. It's a rock with arms. And then... Obviously, the second Pokemon when it gets brought out is Onyx. It's this huge, big rock worm thing with a horn. And I feel like that's such a, a nice sort of first big important battle. Okay, overall thoughts? It's a simple episode. Ash has got a goal, which is to defeat the gym leader to win his first badge. I quite like it. It's got a bit of depth to Brock, where he seems more serious in this episode than he does in the rest of the series because he's so much more of a clown this version of him's more serious and a lot more caring towards his family instead of the 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 sort of creepy weirdo that he becomes oh yeah i forgot that that was a thing you forgot how he's a creep i forgot how he's a pervert yes he is who hits on anyone in a uniform uh i have so many issues with that yeah overall i felt it was just okay it had a few good moments and a few bad moments I think we need to get to maybe episode 15 for me to start really enjoying these episodes because I, I like the first set. It's kind of nostalgic for me, but I think they, they get more complex and a bit more meaty after maybe like 15 episodes. I'm still enjoying the Pokemon episodes. I am finding them funny. They're not bad, but they're not amazing. I do feel they, they follow a formula from now on for quite some time. I hope not. We'll find out in the ne- next episode. The second episode we are watching is Cabritoyamon's Electroshocker. The kids find a weird factory and split up to look for digi-clues. Ty, Joe and Sora wake up Andromon, who promptly starts attacking them. While they're running for their lives, Izzy's messing around with the factory's digicode, until Tentamon starts to combust, forcing him to stop. The gang regroups on the roof and a battle ensues between Greymon, Garurumon and Andromon. Izzy works out that the code from earlier will help Tentamon digivolve to Kabutarimon, who destroys Andromon's black gear with his electroshocker. The kids then leave via the sewers and talk for a bit. So what did you like about this episode? Patamon on TK's hat. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, I was, I was waiting for more. I don't know what to say about it. Just... Yes. It is the most adorable thing. I forgot how cute Patamon was. Patamon is the cutest thing in the whole show right now. Definitely has the cutest moments. Something else I can maybe go into more depth on is we saw Agumon learning from Tai and how Tai was behaving. So, like, at the start of the episode, Tai tries to fix Izzy's computer by hitting it. What's that called? Is it percussive maintenance? Yeah, I think that's what they call it. Yeah, and then later in the episode, Agumon hits Andromon because that's what he's been told to do to fix computers i didn't notice that That, that's kind of interesting 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 we're referencing jeff yeah so that's cool because the digimon are learning from the humans same way that the humans learning from the digimon even if it's dumb lessons because ty's a bit of an idiot for hitting things to fix things i don't know it works a lot of the time sometimes works usually it just breaks things or makes it worse which it did this time because it made the giant killer robot chase them pointless factory is pointless i really like the fact that it just does nothing like it doesn't consume power because it's not a physical thing. It just uses digital code to make it do its thing, which is to do nothing, just, just to work, basically. And I think it's pretty neat. It's weird. It's more of the the, the, the DWW. <laughs> the Digiworld weirdness. Yes, I love it. I knew you'd bring it up. It's great. It's your only thing. It's not my only thing. It's one of the few things you can always salvage from these episodes is you like the weirdness. It's quite prominent in this season and i like it makes no sense and it doesn't need to make sense because not a lot in this show makes sense who needs sense i also like andromon it's got a lot happening with it design wise like it's got human parts and then it's got machinery sort of stuck in it and it looks a bit scary i agree that i like andromon's design but i feel like they could have made him so much better as an enemy in this episode in what way he didn't feel creepy enough or intimidating enough i thought he was pretty intimidating he doesn't run at them he 
walks slowly and constantly, which is kind of scary. For me, it's a lot scarier than something running at me, because if, if something's running at me, it's an immediate threat. But to see something in the distance walking at a constant pace towards you, knowing it's going to get to you at some point, is awful. It prolongs that sense of it's going to get to us soon. And the bit where where they're hiding from him, and they can just see the eyes glowing that that's pretty cool that's yeah i feel like the elements of him that are sort of like the cybermen from doctor who mm, i was going to mention that actually saying how they're, they're quite similar also andromon's an ultimate the first ultimate that they fight i'm pretty sure andromon could just kill the kids with its bare hands because it's really powerful like it fights two champions at the same time and wipes the floor with them i do like that whole battle i also learned something whilst watching it that um on andromon's foot it has the words digital monster three and i think it's such a nice little sneaky easter egg because andromon's first appearance is in the version three v pet i was like oh my gosh does that say what i think it says and it says what i thought it said and it made me really happy yeah but i feel andromon's voice acting felt like it had too much personality in it like it wasn't robotic enough to make it really creepy i think it would have been a lot cool if it had even if they had like a synthetic voice or even if he was just silent i think in the japanese version he's silent that's i've probably heard that from lost in translation man. Mm. most of the information i get about these shows is from either lost in translation man or podigus i'm not gonna lie but yeah andromon could have been so much creepier can we talk about andromon's attacks so there's andromon's hand starts spinning then becomes a like a, a drill that he swishes and then arcs light that fires at them which is a lightning blade and then fish boob guns with mini guns in their mouth <laughs> okay fine have that go ahead why not i prefer a lightning blade to fish boob missiles i don't know i think it's one thing that that digimon has is is the absurd attacks it's, it's such a weird attack like just fish missiles okay but fish missiles that mouths open to have mini guns it's an unnecessary extra step strap every weapon you want onto him it'll be fine <laughs> anything else you like about this episode itzy Izzy. they focus on itzy and although it's not the best exploration of itzy it's a good start like it sort of hints at itzy's personal story or background i like how izzy talks about being a bit of a loner saying that oh i'm happy sort of in my own company which is nice because like i used to enjoy my own company like even now i enjoy my own company i like sort of sitting with a book by myself in some peace and quiet it's not weird to like your own company and i think it's nice to have someone for kids to go oh he sort of enjoys computers and likes his own space i also like the interaction with uh tentamon and izzy as well the little conversations they have yeah tentamon's learning about izzy as well which is really cool also izzy broke tentamon and then hacks him to evolve which i think is such a izzy thing to do i know it's so weird like it breaks the pattern of the partner being in danger because it, Izzy isn't directly in the middle of the battle being attacked. He's just like, okay, I'm going to do exactly the same code as earlier, but this time it's going to work for some reason. It was cool. I liked it. I also liked how Izzy's laptop started working when they walked sort of into the factory area. And then when they leave by the sewers, it dies again. I think that's kind of cool. It's almost like the battery that powers the factory sort of isn't, really wired to the factory it's this code that affects the area that says things with power work so it's also powering izzy's laptop have you got anything else you liked about this episode i liked just the bit with izzy learning about the digital world and inside the battery that's the ultimate in dww him seeing the code on, written on the inside and then wipes a bit off and everything breaks and then he sort of replaces it with metallic pen which isn't metallic izzy's uncovered this new information in this episode that we don't really hear about at all it'd be kind of cool imagining izzy learning all about this code and then him sort of they're in an, in an emergency where they need an escape and izzy just gets out a pen and writes on the floor and then suddenly a door opens up that's kind of cool but it never happens i know it doesn't but it's a head cannon that i have that izzy could learn how to manipulate the world probably could do if he could stay in the battery for the rest of his life that would actually be pretty interesting if izzy just sat in the battery for the entire series i was like the main commander like, he could probably send messages if he worked out the digicode it'd be like in power rangers he'd be the massive holographic head so is there anything you don't like about this episode bad jokes are back in full force did they ever leave nope you do know we're watching digimon don't you i'm well aware i don't like how in the opening recap sora says one of those weird black gears like, they've only seen the one. It's like, Sora, you, you don't know they're a thing yet. Stop putting holes in the plot. I think there's going to be plenty holes in this plot anyway. 
it is basically Swiss cheese. Did you want the Swiss cheese of anime? And then they do another season where they try to fill over the holes, but in making like filling over the holes, they make even more holes. And at some point, the cheese gets dropped on the floor. And then someone else picks it up and goes, "Hmm, okay, I like this cheese. Let's make more of this cheese." What about the holes? Leave them in. Make some new ones, maybe. No, they make a whole new cheese, which says that the first cheese was actually a TV show. <laughs> a whole new cheese. <laughs> I think this metaphor has gone far enough. It has. Is there anything you didn't like apart from that? There's a bit where Ty says, did you see that smoke over there? Where? Where, Ty? Because if you look at the image that's on the screen, it's the background, the splotchy background. And there's like like a couple of grey smudges on there. It's like, oh, Ty, no. Don't talk about the smoke if you can't really see it amongst the splotchies. I don't get why he's so confused, because they've already explored this whole island. They've seen it already. They did it like yesterday. They walked on the entire island as well, everything. Exactly. So why why don't they recognise this factory? There's a line which... Are, Matt, he says, I wonder if they can manufacture us a way home. Matt, why are you doing this? Stop this. One thing that also annoyed me was, I think that they're meant to be trapped in the factory, but they don't make it specifically clear. Like, <laughs> did you not even realise that was the case yourself? No. I'd assume they just put it in, in the dub. No, it's sort of like, Matt's going on about nothing ever comes in or leaves or whatever they came in they could just leave the same way how does this work it's not too hard to just put in a little bit of like i don't know a door showing behind them and they're not being able to get it open and then it's like oh they're actually trapped in the factory nothing's making them stay they could just turn around and go this space is pointless let's leave instead they sort of just keep walking around they don't show us why the traps they're just like oh the traps I, I suppose is he staying in the in the battery sort of one thing that's keeping them there actually just it's not a thing i don't like it's a thing i think is really cool is is he can touch type like he doesn't look at the screen he's just typing whilst looking around that's an impressive skill to have uh, he, i think he's like nine isn't he and he can touch type i can't touch type i can't i i can type quite well but i can't sort of without looking at the screen considering it's like as i said before it's in the 90s when computers weren't a massive thing that's quite a skill to have i'm impressed is he i'm impressed even if you are a bit odd he must have dedicated pretty much all this time to this computer he's an awkward sausage oh he's such an introvert also, did you notice how done Kabuterimon sounded? At what point? When Tentamon did evolve for the first time. It's like, Kabuterimon. Oh, Kabuterimon knows what's up with this plot. <laughs> what do you think of Kabuterimon? Uh, it's okay. I like bugs, so I like Kabuterimon. Uh, I don't know. I never really liked it. Is there anything else? No, um, you? One more thing is that it seems like TK is being the damsel in distress every episode. Did he fall down again? <laughs> he had two fish boom missiles coming straight at him that he needed to be saved from. That's because he's the tiniest one and has to be saved. It's always TK. Like, Matt's episode, it was TK. This episode, it was TK. Why is it always TK? Like, put, I don't know, put Joe in danger. Joe's always in danger. <laughs> I guess, really, we had Ty, Matt, and Izzy fighting, which leaves... Sora, Mimi, Joe, and TK. Out of those, two of them would be actual damsels in distress. One of them's the little kid in distress, and then one of them's just Joe, who's always in distress. Just Joe. <laughs> just Joe. So I guess really they were sort of stuck for choices, and it had to be TK again, unless they wanted to be sexist. Instead, they were childist or ageist, whatever you want to call it. I'll go with ageist. Ageist. Digimon's ageist. <laughs> so what was your favourite thing in this episode? Tentaman, because he's a good character. He seems to have his a natural personality, which some of the Digimon just, like Beomon only fawns over Sora, but Tentamon's got a personality that's actually a bit different to Izzy. Like, he's not as introverted or unsociable. I don't know, there, there was one bit where they sort of just both try and out long word each other for no reason, but I could see where you're coming from. That was probably the writers trying to make them seem super smart. They are a good combo, I do quite like them. I like that pairing. In a lot of Japanese shows, they have the smart kids with bugs. I think it's because of the, the whole being bug collectors thing that happens in Japan. My favourite thing was Andromon, because it's a tough opponent and it took strategy. It wasn't a case of, oh, let's attack it, and then that didn't work, so let's attack it with my main attack and we win. It takes more than just use your main attack, because it took two people attacking for it to not work. And then uh, they were like, oh, let's use a crane and oh let's just run away from it yeah this is probably the most dynamic battle we've had so far we've only ever had one digivolve digimon at a time before it was nice to see them sort of break from the routine of what we've had before in the same in the last episodes yeah nice change 
Overall thoughts? Good episode. I remember it being worse for some reason, and I'm not sure why. I thought it was okay. Like, this week's been very okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they've not been bad, but they've not been amazing. It's not as good as what we get later on, but it's it's not really bad. It's acceptable. It's meh. It had the nice twist of the bad guy being a lot more powerful than they are at the moment. It, a whole other level. And they can't just defeat them with one Digimon. It was okay. <laughs> That's all I could say about it. Now it's time for Mono A Mono, where we talk about the similarities and differences in these episodes. So let's start with our Monsters of the Week. Mine was Ash Ketchum. <laughs> I was going to ask why, but then just I thought about it. I was like, I get it. He tortures Pikachu. <laughs> Who does that? He just lets Pikachu get crushed, then blames him for not being strong enough, experiments on him, then lets him get crushed again. <laughs> it's not nice. Ash is the true monster. I think that's the most justified answer I've ever had. How about you? What was your monster of the week? Andromon, because boobfish and metal parts that look like it's just jammed into a human. Strongest enemy they fought yet. Doesn't really seem to take any damage when they fight it. It moves slowly when it goes towards them, so it's like that constant looming threat which scares me. But I feel like yours is so much better. Ash was the true monster all along. Yep. Okay, which episode do you think had the best storyline? Eh, they're both okay. I'm inclined to agree. They're about the same level of quality. At a push, I'd say Digimon because it's got the tougher opponent and and the strategy that's involved. Yeah, I've got Pokemon written down, but I'm not really sure why. Because I've forgotten since then why I thought Pokemon was slightly better. I'm probably wrong. Like After this discussion this time, Pokemon was a lot worse than my, I initially thought it was. When I was watching it, I found it funny and enjoyed it. But looking back on it now, it wasn't that good. I feel like the plots are really simple. So they're kind of cool, but analysing it, sort of, it's difficult. Pokemon had more twists. I, I liked the twist where Ash didn't finish off Onyx. I wasn't so keen on the twist where Flint was Brock's dad. <laughs> I suppose they could have made it simpler. They could have had Ash go and lose the first battle, then go and win the second one like straight away. It'd be super easy and not have the backstory to Brock and everything. And I feel like they, they tried some nice things. The battle was rigged. It wasn't the best Pokemon battle we've ever seen. No, no, it wasn't. I feel like the last... Which one was the last battle? With the... Metapod and Metapod. <laughs> that was the most exciting battle we've had so far. It was definitely the weirdest. Were there any similarities... And differences in these episodes. In both episodes, the kids are out of their depth. They're facing a new level of threat, which is the gym leaders or the ultimate levels. And they both end up befriending that threat. So what about you? Any any similarities in these episodes? We learn a bit more about the worlds that they're in. Because we learn about the gyms in Pokemon. And we learn about the code that makes up the whole digital world. And another thing is that we both just gloss over things that really need more explanation. Like Nurse Joy or the digital world being made up of entirely code. Which episode did you enjoy the most? I don't I don't know. It's hard to pick an episode this week. I think Digimon had the better storyline, but I enjoyed Pokemon more because it had like it had Onyx and it had the new teammate joining us. Because Brock's kinda cool but he's he's a creep. Yeah, I have got Pokemon written down here as the better episode, but after talking about it, there's the cat. <laughs> She's done. She's done now. Yeah, after talking about it today, really, I think Digimon... Shut up, cat! <laughs> Re- really, I think... <laughs> I'm, I'm not making her do this. This is the cat trying to get me to stop saying that I think Digimon was better this week. <laughs> She's like, stop it, it was awful. <laughs> why, does the, uh, why does the robot have fish boob missiles? <laughs> Yeah, I think Digimon has it this week. I think it's because it, it introduced us to more new elements than Pokemon. Pokemon was sort of, oh, there's gym leaders, here's one. It explores Izzy's character a lot more than it does Brock's. I feel like the new things we learn are like flavour text for Brock. Oh, he's got a family where he looks after all the kids and stuff. It's just depth that they add, which you don't really need to know. In Digimon, the stuff we find out... It's kind of important, like it's all this code which controls actual things in the world. And there's this level of Digimon which is kind of really powerful compared to what we have so far. And the battle was better because they, what's, they call it cheating. Did Izzy cheat? I think he used a different approach than they've used before. 
I wouldn't call it cheating. It wasn't just like an environmental thing that happened in Pokemon. Well, maybe. Maybe it is environmental because of the area they're in. I guess because the computer slash laptop it couldn't run outside of the factory. And he can't use it again because the laptop's turned off. So he's not got access to that program, which let Tentamon evolve. So are we giving the point to Digimon this time? Yes. I feel like we should. Okay. It caused the least suffering in these episodes. Actually, that's another similarity. Pikachu was in pain and Tentamon was also in pain. They both got supercharged. So the score currently stands 3-2 to Pokemon. Join us again next time where we will be watching episode 6. Togemon in Toy Town and Clefairy and the Moonstone. You can find the Moncast on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, with the Will Forums, SoundCloud and iTunes. Just search for the Moncast. Or you can email us at themoncastpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Butts, 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 butts. Digi butts, digital buttocks, digi butts are the champions. Change into digital buttocks to save the digital world. Tentabutt, digital two. Kabutari, Kabutari butt. <laughs> I'm back. Hello.